When a child is in a life-threatening situation, parents are often faced with difficult decisions. This is a reality for two parents who are fighting for what they believe is best for their son. Cancer, a global epidemic that kills more than 8 million people a year worldwide. The pain, the suffering, the hope of keeping a loved one alive. But one mom is refusing chemotherapy and radiation for her six-year-old dying son because she, quote, doesn't understand it and how it can actually save lives. I don't understand it. And I've said that to the oncologist. What part of it can't you understand? They're treating cancer with a carcinogenic or two carcinogenics. It doesn't make sense to me. The boy's parents decided against treatment after their son was diagnosed with a large brain tumor, further adding, quote, I don't want my son's brain fried. With radiotherapy and chemotherapy, then uh, the survival rates can be well over 80 per cent. I find it really difficult to see that that's called a treatment. Yet it has been proven to be a successful treatment. In some cases, yeah. An Australian court says the young boy will die within months without treatment. It's a really difficult scenario, and to join in this conversation, we have board-certified oncologist Dr. Lawrence Pirro. Dr. Pirro, it's so difficult talking about cancer in young children who obviously can't make their own decisions when it comes to medical treatment. Uh, tell us a little bit about the unique elements of this case. First of all, this kind of brain tumor, it's the most common brain tumor that occurs in kids. It occurs in the, in the posterior fossa of the brain, as you know, the cerebellum, which is your balance area. And so one of the interesting dilemmas here is when you hear the mother talk, you would think, oh, this is a choice of taking toxic therapy versus having sort of wonderful remaining time with my child. But there's no wonderful remaining time if you don't treat this child. This tumor is going to grow. It's going to progressively damage the child so his neurological functions will go away. So it's, it's really not a choice of let's have a year of good time versus horrible chemotherapy. This is a bad choice either way. The reason why I think that it's so important that this child be treated is because the rate of development of new treatments is so dramatic that if this child can live three years or five years, we probably will have treatments to treat this disease that we can't even imagine that we have today. And so we're not just cutting him off from having five years of survival. We may be cutting him off from having 20 years of survival by making this decision. That mother said something in the tape that I really, really struggle with as a doctor and a mother. She said, well, I don't understand it, so therefore I'm refusing it. I don't, I'm not a lawyer, I don't understand legal documents, but I trust a lawyer who explains them to me. I don't understand accounting, but I trust an accountant who, to tell me, you know, so mm -hmm. I, where is the onus of responsibility on the doctor to do a better job of explaining it so the parent does understand, or it, at ultimately does a parent have to say, I am not a physician, I trust you to help me make this decision together for the best interest of my child. You're absolutely right, and the latter is clearly the, the direction. You have an obligation to find someone that you do trust, right? So if you don't trust the team you have, then find a team that you do trust and then listen to them. The treatment with most, most cancers has parts that are, are, are not pleasant at all, so you can't fault her, but it, it, it in being hesitant, but I mean, she needs help too. She needs to be counseled along the way and understand that this is the best thing for her child. Well, like they, we said, of they knowledge. have met her part way because the initial recommendation was for the combination of chemotherapy and radiation therapy, and that is indeed a very toxic situation because in this disease, you have to radiate the whole spine and the brain. Right. That's a lot of radiation. So they said, listen, let's, and I think this is the right approach, it's the approach I would take is, let's give him chemotherapy, which is more tolerable. That doesn't tend to be the type of treatment that damages the brain so much, it's more the radiation. And let's see what kind of response he gets. And if he, he keeps going and, and in a pretty good way with the chemotherapy, he might not need radiation therapy, and then maybe one of the other treatments might be able to be used. That's why we say so many times, medicine, not always black and white, a lot of gray. We just pray this child has a great outcome. Dr. Pirro, thank you so much. Medicine.